Hi, I'm Chris Middlestad, founder of The Fruit Guys. Today we're out in Exeter, California. The goal of our new company, Preservation Harvest, is to try to find small farmland that has been in production already and has been using conventional growing methods and to then convert that farm over to organic growing methods. One of the reasons we were interested in preserving this farm in particular was because the owner of this farm, um, before Ronnie uh, talked to him about the land, um, he was basically put in a position where the economics of Tulare County are such that it was actually better for him financially to plow this orchard under and grow corn for either ethanol or for dairy feed than it was to actually continue to harvest this orchard. One of the things that's interesting about uh, the process of helping to convert a conventional orchard into an organic orchard is just thinking about using the resources that you have at hand to help keep the farm going at all times. So take for a look down here, for example, at the, um, the space in between the rows, and you'll see that all of this, this mulch, is basically made up of the actual plum branches and the, um, the, uh, the actual twigs that are coming off the trees when we do the thinning every, uh, every springtime. And we're putting that down, and it's mulching into the ground, and it's helping bring, keep the water and the moisture that's actually naturally in the tree, keeping it back in the soil. When we think about watering and how we're gonna water the tree, how are we gonna conserve as much of the resources as we possibly can? You don't have to flood irrigate the orchard, but you can spray exactly where the tree needs it, and then you can focus the water at the roots of the tree, and it's only gonna use as much water as it needs. One of the things you may hear in the background as well is the sound of lawn mowing. And one of the reasons we're actually mowing in between the orchard is because when we convert from a conventional growing process to an organic growing process, we don't want to use a herbicide to suppress grass growth or weed growth. We want to actually try to mow it and then have it go back into the ground. One of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting cover crop in these rows so that one, we're going to be um, having a plant that's going to be producing, uh, as it mulches down, produces nitrogen back into the soil. But two, then it's actually going to shade this area with um, the cover crop so that it doesn't encourage the weeds then to grow up and take the energy away from the trees. And these trees have been uh, been around for a long time and they have uh, um, you know a lot of great production still left in them so we want to try to preserve that. But if you take a look at this tree there's been a little bit of rot in the bottom of this tree and one of the things that's interesting is um, our farmer uh, Ronnie Gutierrez he he basically had this idea where instead of replanting this tree what we're doing is we're letting the new suckers actually come up off the tree and the suckers are basically where the new branches are growing and you're gonna get new fruit and the tree is basically renewing itself uh, over time which is a great way uh, again for us to think about uh, preservation of stuff that is old and stuff that is valuable we want to continue to reuse those resources and find ways to keep them alive right now you're getting a lot of the fruit coming out so what will happen is um you're gonna have to thin them. So if you thin them, then you'll gain a size. And now, and obviously thinning the fruit also, it puts the energy of the tree back into these individual pieces. Yeah. So if there's six pieces, you weed them down to two, that same amount of energy instead of going to six is gonna go into these two. One, and, then and that's how you gain sizes and flavors. And sugars and all those things too. Yeah. It's all gotta be hand done. This yeah. is not anything that could be done with yeah. a machine. It's all, everything's done by hand. hand. Here. Take a look at this little tree here and how much fruit is left behind that they pulled off of the small sizes or the stuff that's in clusters so that the stuff that you actually eat has more room to grow and is going to absorb more energy from that tree. In order to try to get this tree to pollinate properly and produce fruit, one of the things that farmers do is that they actually graft uh, what's called a pollinator onto this tree. So this is here, this is marked with white so that the farmer knows not to cut this branch. It grows a lot higher than the other ones and it attracts the bees down to the tree. Uh, it's a different variety than the tree itself and then it's gonna bring these bees down and they're gonna pollinate the tree to produce fruit. Some varieties you don't actually need to graft it onto the tree. What you need to do though is put a pollinator tree in the region of other trees that you're trying to pollinate and then it brings the bees in and it uh, pollinates the tree and gets the fruit going. This farm sits at the base of the lower part of the Sierras. There's a lot of water actually under the ground here that comes down from the Sierra. So water in terms of the amount of water available to farmers in this part of California isn't as much a problem as it is for other farmers um, in different areas but still we want to be very cautious and careful when it comes to water conservation because we're concerned that it's an issue for the entire state of California that we have to watch very carefully and make sure that we manage appropriately and properly. Thanks for being here with us today we really appreciate it I'm glad I could walk you around and tell you a little bit about what we're up to we hope to see you again soon.